Good afternoon and welcome to another Glastonbury Gabriel video. You find me here today in the middle of town because I've come to talk to Paul Manning, Chair of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I want to look into how the uh, COVID is affecting the town, how the businesses are coping and what they're looking to do to move into the future. Welcome to the channel everybody. Today I'm speaking to Paul Manning who is Chair of the Chamber of Commerce here in Glastonbury. Um, yep. Welcome today, Paul. Um, I you. briefly wanted to talk about how Glastonbury is reacting to this last year of lockdowns, how the businesses are suffering, et cetera, et cetera. But first of all, maybe could you tell us a bit about yourself and, and your role in the uh, chamber? Okay, uh, my name is Paul Manning. I run a small business in town called Blue Cedar Print Works, uh, which does printing mainly for artists, but we do general printing as well. Um, I was involved with chamber really right right from the beginning of, of this one um basically there in a chamber of commerce in town in the past and that failed about 15 years ago and the town had been without a chamber of commerce um and the story of, of, of how things happened with this chamber was that we had a um a bit of a crisis in town in 2015 when all the banks left didn't we go? um and that was causing or it was going to cause a lot of problems for um, the businesses in the town. And, and in fact, Gabe, you were very much a part of, of, of that campaign. You, in fact, yeah, I remember you coming into my office, uh, into my shop and saying, you know, you've oh, got to do something. <laughs> gang of three, um, wasn't it? You mean, uh, Paul, yeah. <laughs> the last thing I knew, I was sort of read, ended up sort of sitting at the front of the town hall uh, taking questions because I used to work many years ago, before in a previous life, I used to work for a bank and, um, for the head office of a bank so I know quite a lot about how banks operate and what they're trying to achieve and everything so I, I was sort of field, fielding questions and um, basically the outcome of, of that meeting was that we should have a campaign mm. um, which came to be known as the last bank standing campaign and it was great fun it went on for about six or nine months or so but um we made some we, great films didn't we fantastic videos um of, I if you haven't seen it, I recommend uh, your viewers to check out the, the, the Crazy Horse video. Uh, it's the, one of the best spaghetti westerns made, made this century, I think. I'll it's, put a link in the description. It's abso absolutely fantastic. Um, and that was great fun. And um, I guess one of the things, although we didn't um, obviously save the banks, because we knew we never would, because the banks never changed their minds. Um, but it did raise the profile quite a bit. And I think it was a major part in the nationwide coming into town. Oh, I think it was and, completely. And um, it was, it was, you know, it was, it was a successful campaign. I think, even though, as I say, we, you know, because of what we did achieve. Um, and as part of that, um, the businesses realised, isn't it great when you know what can be achieved when you all work together? Yeah. And that's what led to the formation of the, the Chamber of Commerce. And in fact, the effectively the committee of last bank standing became the committee of of of, of Glastonbury Chamber of Commerce and um, so um, unlike previous attempts to start a Chamber of Commerce we were sort of up and running from day one because we already had about 50 members and uh, immediately that went the sort of shot up to about 80 um, so we became uh, immediately within a, within a few months we became one of the largest chambers in, in Menfit um, and yeah, um, ready to make our impact on the town. Excellent. So Glastonbury High Street's been really hard hit this last year. Um, how are the businesses coping? Are you, I mean, are you, what's the word in the, what's the road on the ground as it were? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one to uh, answer because, uh, you know, we're currently in lockdown. So as, as you know, from your previous videos, you know, you walk down the high street at the moment, there's hardly anything open. No. Um, you know, fortunately, the government have been supportive and they have given some money, which has obviously been a help. Um, so in, in general terms, I'm only aware of Excalibur as the only business that actually sort of was here pre pre COVID and won't be here post COVID. But as far as I'm aware, I think most of the others are there. There was we've had a chat. I know Cashy went at the top of the high street, but that was planned to go anyhow. Captain Colton, they've gone. But again, that was that was they were planning to go anyhow so uh, in terms of the covid impact it is it's sort of too early to tell at this stage um i think though that in answer to, you know to your question that the businesses that have been most badly hit 
affected are the ones in the hospitality area. So it is going to be the cafes and also the B&Bs and, and, and the ancillary things like tax taxis and, and other things because um, and they're not necessarily on the high street. And a lot of those, you know, they're, they're not actually in the centre of town at all. And uh, they've been hit particularly hard. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's obviously been a very tough year for them. Um, I am optimistic about the about the future, though. But yeah, it, it's been a tough year. As you know, I've done the three previous videos, um, and I've tried to emphasise the fact that a lot of these shops, although they are closed physically, virtually, Glastonbury is very much open and, and and ready for business. So, I mean, what is your experience? Do you know how businesses have sort of reinvented themselves, if you like? To well, and, and, and yeah, certainly. And a number of them have, uh, you know, like my business, for instance, we're closed to the public, but we're doing click and collect. So people basically email stuff in and we print it, they collect it. Mm -hmm. And I noticed even that the, there's even some businesses who haven't even got a, like a website or stuff that they are sort of got little signs up in their door saying just message us on Facebook is is our details. Yeah. Tell us what you want and um, give us a call and, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll leave it out for you. So that they're, they're looking at ways to work around. Mm -hmm. um, I think the interesting thing is that, like last year, you know, obviously was a, was a bad year, but in those little areas, those short times when the sort of the, the lockdown was eased and people were allowed to come into town, you know, the town just filled up. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think looking at the longer term, I think that things are good. I think that what will happen is that, you know, I, my, my personal view is that probably by the summer, early sort of June, July time, things will be pretty much back to normal. And we will see a fantastic year. You know, the, the last the last six months of this year will be better than any any year that the town has ever had. There's a swathe of people who just want to come back to Glastonbury. Again. Exactly. Because so many people, not just they want to come to Glastonbury, but also they don't want to or won't be able to go overseas. They're going to be doing these staycations. Yeah. And where's a nice place to come in the UK? And it's Glastonbury. Glastonbury. Yeah. And, the, and the great thing about Glastonbury is that, um, you, you know, that what, one of the things that has, which has worked in our favour through this, 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 the, the, the sort of the, the pandemic is that we haven't got the, the large chains. If you actually look at the shops in the high street, well, we've got a boost the chemist, yeah. um, we've got a nationwide, and we've got a couple of charity shops, but that's it. We haven't, we haven't got any big chains. No. So there are other towns, some not very far from here, where you know the, the headline news is oh this shop is closing this shop is closing we we haven't got that to deal with um so basically when we come out of the situation i think that glastonbury town will look very similar to how it did before mm -hmm. uh, and yeah i, I think if anything it, it will be busier good because i think you know it's important we realize that these are very small businesses and some of them are actually so small they probably fall off the bottom of the the government catch-all net for these for these businesses so you know they are struggling and of course now we hear that Glastonbury Festival has been cancelled for 2021 and that is a huge impact on the town with the taxes and the cafes and you know again the industry that's being hit now is going to be doubly hit by the loss of Glastonbury Festival isn't it? No I, I saw a report um, I think it was last week it was saying that the festival brings 32 million into Mendip so that's obviously a, a huge loss and a lot of, of that affects us in the town because a lot of the shops there you know that that you know they they go to Glastonbury Festival as 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 store holders and, and they, they do things there and you yeah, know, it's a big chunk of it. for that weekend isn't it <laughs> it's a big it's a it's a huge chunk of their income and, and similarly the be a lot of the B&Bs in town you know you, you the, the whole festival week or two weeks is, is fully booked Mm. And of course, a lot of the ancillary stuff like the light rigs and the sound rigs, they do obviously get booked from the local companies. And so again, they, some of these companies, that's a fifth of their annual income gone. Exactly. And then, and then also, um, you know, Glastonbury is a very creative town. You know, we've got a lot of musicians in, in town who just have had a really difficult 12 months. And I really feel for them. Um, you know, it's almost like they're, they're not, you know, apart from sort of performing from their bedrooms, there's not that, you know, there's so little that they can actually actually do at the moment, which is yeah. must be really frustrating for them. So, I mean, I, I'm, I will put in the listings below, as I normally do, I've got various links to places like the Vicky's site at Normal for Glastonbury and that, who maintain lists of all these companies. 
Um, does the chamber have anything online that I could link to? Uh, we've got a chamber website, which um, we uh, uh, basically we get we put various sort of bits of information on there, which is useful for businesses. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we're going to be doing as a chamber is that um, in March we're looking to be doing like some sort of business a business support day, which yeah. will be on Zoom. Okay. So that if effectively um, the, int the intention is to sort of have this this day where people can dip in and dip out. They haven't got to sit in front of the screen for 10 hours because there's going to be a whole program of different events happening during the course of the day and people can just dip in and dip out as they want. But it will be giving lots of different things because um, my feeling is that, um, as I said before, that I think the second half of this year is going to be really good. And it's now, this is the time that people need to start planning about how they're going to reopen, what are they going to be doing? Mm. Because it is going to be a slightly different world. You know, um, I see some a lot of things that are changing. Um, for instance, um, a lot more is happening, obviously, online um, at the moment. And also, and you know, like one thing that the Chamber has been doing is there's an initiative called My Mendip, mm -hmm. um, which actually was developed by a guy in town, Ed Forrest, who, who started it. Um, and basically, it's a way of effectively almost like recreating Glastonbury online so that you can actually buy things and, you know, visit shops and, and things like that. Mm. So we're very supportive of that. Um, and yeah, yeah, we, we just really want to sort of get people ready for this, this new world. Um, the other thing that's, that's interesting as well, because from my banking perspective, is that there's been a move away from cash, that the, 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 the amount of cash flowing around is, is lower than, 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 than previously. So that, that, that's another change in habits as well. Mm. So I think another thing is there's a butt of many jokes, but the breakfast clubs, the uh, the breakfast business clubs, I see perhaps post lockdown or in, in this new world, brave one when we get there, um, I see a big need for that networking thing because people will have been out of touch and there's a whole new sense of coming back together as businesses, I guess. Is the chamber going to be involved in that at all? Because I know you have in the past run some, haven't you? We have. We used to run them very successfully. We had them um, every month um, um, pre pre lockdown. Um, it's almost certainly going to happen, and um, it's also it's 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 two things. It's 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 great for the um, obviously for the members for networking. It's also good that we bring business into the cafes as well. At, at sort of often at times that when they wouldn't be having business. So um, yeah, that is something I, I think will happen, and I think yeah. Um, you know, with all this social distancing and stuff, once it's all over, I think people are going to have to make up for it, you know. I think another another aspect of this is, you mentioned that the normal high streets with the chain store shops. Glastonbury is very much a destination shopping um, place, isn't it? Because part of the shopping here is actually coming here and going into the shops and experiencing the smell of the joss sticks, you know, the, the hippies outside playing guitar. The whole thing is part of the package and I think online will never replace that so I think maybe post post COVID I think the businesses will have more of an online presence but I think that shift to online may affect Glastonbury less than the conventional high street exactly there's there's nothing online that can um imitate standing at the top of the tour you no, know and, 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 you know you just you just can't you know whatever how you get into VR or whatever it's just it's just not the same yeah well, thank you very much for taking the time out of your very busy day there at the Blue Cedar Printworks. I'll again put a link to your business um, down below. And if anybody is in the Glastonbury area, I mean, did you do mail order? Yeah, we do. Oh, very much so, all over the world, yeah. yeah there you go. So if you need any printing done, uh, I can personally recommend this guy's work having used it. So do do uh, do drop him a link. So thank you very much and thank you for being with us today. And thank you very much for watching this video today. I hope it's given you an insight into what's going on here in Glastonbury. And maybe, just maybe, if you fancy coming to see us when all this is over, there'll be a bed and breakfast waiting to hear from you. Thanks a lot and goodbye.